forgot about this. Nah, I ain't forget. 10 things I hate about you. The Walking Dead. Tell Tell. Season 1. The OG season. The season that started it all. That season. right into it first thing Kenneth now despite Kenneth being a likable character later on in the series this season oh man Kenneth Kenneth, Kennethy, Kimmy, Ken, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. He has to be one of the biggest hypocrites I had ever seen in the Walking Dead series. Telltale's Walking Dead series. And there's a lot of them, but, like, Bonnie, but, besides the point, you put your family first. But Ken, his decisions are fucking stupid. So, spoiler alert for those who haven't played the game yet. Kennedy has a son named Dumbass. <laughs> I mean, I mean Duck, and. In the earlier parts of the season, he, Duck, his kid gets another man's kid killed. Then, despite your best efforts as Lee to try to fix or remedy the situation, it's just not gonna happen. No. No. Somebody dies because of Ken's son, and of course, you know. Ken's gonna save his kid, but I mean, if he was watching this dumbass kid who had to go touch and shit, none of this would have happened. But that's just, that's a big crux of what's gonna happen later on. So, we meet these two other people, these other people, uh, what's, what's the name? Lily and Larry. Larry being the father of Lily. Right, and later on, we are held captive by these fucking cannibals. We're stuck in this, I don't even know what to call it, this room, and Larry's got heart problems. He's a really big guy. It happens. Old man, too. It happens. He gets heart confarctions. And he's on his way to being dead. We have nothing to save him this time like we did previously. Not to my knowledge. And you are tasked, you, Lee, the protagonist, you are tasked with either trying to help Larry or if you don't opt to do that, you know, if you don't want to help Lily, help Larry, well then you would have to help Kenny put Larry down. And <laughs> if you decide not to do that, well then Kenny's just gonna put Larry down. But it's so fast. Like he just makes that decision without a second thought. Right? Now here's where things go wild. Remember, like I said, naturally you will put your family first. You would. Now, before Larry is put down, Larry suspects Duck of being bitten and Kenny fights tooth and nail for Duck's sake, as you would. So, for the life of him, he couldn't understand why Lily fought so hard to keep her father around. 
it was just fucking mind-blowing, revolutionary to him. <laughs> and the icing on top of that is he's got the audacity to be mad at you for not backing him. And depending on how things went earlier, you backed him so that his son didn't get clapped. It's just that when the same things apply to him, he just dumbs out for a bit. I don't get it. I, what? Regardless, Kenny, he was annoying as hell. I had to babysit this guy for the duration of this season for his one moment of heroics. We had a whole four to five episodes of dumb shit. So, that's a thing. Second thing, and this one's kind of light, it's Krista. And the thing about Krista is, I don't know what it is with Till. I'm starting to think they got something against black women. I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I just find it kind of odd that every black woman we meet got some fucking attitude problem. I don't get it. It starts with Krista. She's a bit standoffish. And I'm like, she has no reason to be. I don't know what they've seen prior, but we had a group. We've got, well, at this point, two kids, I guess you could say. I don't know what you classify Ben as, but we did have kids, plural. Now we got a kid, singular, if you want to count Ben as an adult. But when we see Krista and Omid, they're standing on top of some highway staking folks out of some weird desolate wasteland. I would be more suspicious of them. What the fuck? And Krista's up here trying to tell me how to raise Glim and shit. I'm like, what, you done spent all these episodes with her? Her parents out somewhere getting ate up. She only looked to me. And here's your rent. What the? And considering, and, and considering she fucks off in the next seat, boy, get your dumb ass. But like I said, that's like, Krista, get the hell out of here. Speaking of getting folks up out of here, it did, this is the third thing, by the way. Did anyone else find that the Mark thing was rushed? Or is it just me? I'm sitting here, I think, I don't know what it was. What was it, the second episode or some shit? I'm thinking to myself, where the hell did he come from? What is his story? He just kind of went by so fast. I don't know if they explained it, but he was only there for that one episode. He was just there to get eaten. <laughs> he was just there to get sacrificed. Poor guy. I don't hate Mark. I just hate how they handled bro. Like they did him so dirty. Depending on how you play, he doesn't get fed. And regardless of how you play, he, no pun intended, takes an arrow to the knee. And on top of that, he is then offered up as a sacrificial lamb to these cannibals who was then would then serve him to me and poor Clementine. The only solace in Mark's arc is that he gets to attack the person that tried to eat him. Not Clem, we didn't try to eat him, but the cannibal. He gets his revenge, some kind of solace. But again, like he was in for that season or that episode and then he was out that episode. And again, did he come from now remember earlier where I mentioned Clementine being a kid duck being a kid and Ben if you could classify him as a kid yeah Ben's a dumbass look <laughs> 
so many things went wrong with this kid. I, I, I hate him, but at the same time, I can't be mad at him. I can't be mad at him. Bro was shook to his fucking core. When we first found him, I don't know who it was, but somebody he knew had their leg inside some bear trap. And then I don't know what becomes of the other guy. He's just gone and we're just left with Ben. Poor naive Ben. We then later find out that he's been giving supplies to some group and they come and they hunt us down in our little hiding spot and I think the reason Ben gave for that was they were going to go hurt his friends or whatever the fuck nigga your friends are gone we are the only friends you know and you fucked us over what I, I, I don't know maybe I'm remembering it wrong but the second your friend tried to bite us after we saved his leg kind kind of kind of saved his leg saved his life <laughs> any ties you had with them was separated guy you was one of us because clearly he was no longer a human being anymore but that led to all the things that happened with Kenny and his family. And spoiler alert, Duck gets bit and Cat. So, Kenny is now without a wife, without a son, and Ben is kind of the reason for that and what does this clown do he wants to tell kenny sporadic hypocritical angry as kenny of all the times you pick you pick the one time where we really need cohesion within the group to fucking tell him that shit why didn't you tell him that shit on the train when we got it moving what the hell boy why would you wait until our lives are in peril? <laughs> and then, bro again tries to just undo all that by saying I will want to help or work with the group, but leading up to that whole confrontation, that's just, the whole him giving away our supplies was just one fuck up on top of another big fuck up. Bro had one job, man. All he had to do was just watch over Clementine. But we're running away from walkers. I look, this dude halfway down a fucking street and Clem's surrounded by walkers. That old relic of a, that hobo, I don't even know what the hell, Charlie? He was out there getting in the mix, trying to save Clem, I'm like, Ben. Nigga, what are you doing? This is why nobody likes you. But with no regard for human life whatsoever. Uh, I had to reverse the roles, man. I had Clem watch him this time. Like, <laughs> and she did a damn good job. Ben survived. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. But his story eventually concluded with him dying. As most do. That is, you know, it is what it is. We've gotten Ben out of the way. Whether you want to classify him as a kid or not, it doesn't matter. The next person on this list is a kid, and he goes by Dumbass! I mean, Duck. <sighs> Despite getting one of Herschel's kids murked and the guy would be his, his son would be Sean like damn why I do Sean's like that besides the point Duck dumbass had to go touch and stuff and then he got somebody killed Duck is the typical 
happy-go-lucky boy, you know, he really does, he's really like that, he really is just a happy-go-lucky kid, and he does not know the fuckery he is in right now with all these damn walkers and all these damn Negan groups coming around trying to murk us, right, so, <laughs> This dude is just running around, touching shit he shouldn't be touching, annoying folks. He was just irritating. Again, this is like Krista. It's light, annoying, but it's light. It's like a, it's like a little nitpick thing. Clem, I don't think was as, I don't know. Maybe they were around the same age, but Clem was not that annoying. Clem personally wasn't that annoying at all to me. Duck, it's like night and day. He pissed me off every fucking scene I had with him. He, I don't know. Look, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big duck fan. <laughs> but speaking of kids, that kind of brings me to the next thing on this list that I didn't, I hated about this game. You remember those rejects from Crawford? You know, people in Crawford weren't allowed to, you know, be there if they were old, they had any type of illnesses, or kids, right? I call them the Crawford rejects, the ones that are exiled from Crawford. And we get separated from the group and we find the rejects in some sewer, I don't know. We find them in some sewer and of course, they're naturally standoffish. They, they don't know if I'm from Crawford or not. So all right, I'll give them a pass for that. They will still brain your ass if you pick the wrong prompt. But again, I'm gonna let that slide. I'm gonna let that slide. Cause that makes sense. The guy we take with us is a doctor, I think. And I don't know if it was his wife or whatever the hell, but she comes along too. She doesn't make it. I'm gonna just put that out there now. She doesn't make it. <laughs> but you thought she was getting more than a couple episodes in? Boy, get your dumb ass. No. It's not happening. So, what's his name? Vernon? Vernon? He looks like a Vernon. We're gonna call him Vernon. Vernon is a company... Well, he's helping us escape this sewer, these pipeline sewer things to get out. And in return, we find him a way away from Crawford, away from this city, away from all this bullshit. So, everybody is trying to find this boat. We find it. We do everything to get it working, like get a battery for it. And when everything is all set up nice, here comes the fuckery with Vernon. He comes in, talking about some, I can keep Clementine safe. I'm like, bitch, you could barely keep yourselves safe. The only reason you're still alive is because A, your condition didn't kick in, and B, everyone from Crawford died. You ain't shit. You ain't been out there battling walkers and cannibals. That's been me. I don't know why. That's the next thing on my list too, man. Everybody questioning Lee. Watching Clem. Like. But I'm, I'm gonna get to that later on. We still on Vernon week ass. This dude sneaks the boat and drives off and leaving us here with all these damn walkers. Which leads to me, or in this case, Lee, getting bit. And if you played this game, you know how that story goes. Clem Strong is a motherfucker to pull Lee's lifeless corpse into some garage. I don't even know how she did it. Again, a nine-year-old Clem. She was earning her badges that game. In the next game too like that's crazy but these clowns these little punk ass 
This is why Crawford rejected them, bruh. That's the real reason. Because they grimy as hell. I'm glad that dude wife got bit. The fuck? Carly and Doug. I'm skipping all over the place. These thoughts are sporadic. Forgive me. But there's Carly and Doug. And you had to pick between the two. Both were in crazy situations. Which... They both die, but the, the manner in which they died, one was way dumber than the other one. Like, in Doug's case, I get it. Doug was getting grabbed from a damn window or whatever. He was like, he was like bees with it. He, he couldn't really move, so I felt it necessary to help him. You know, the first time I played. It made the most sense because if I look, you look on the other side, Carly is struggling with a zombie on the floor and there's a gun on, I don't even know, a shelf or whatever. I'm thinking, well, it's as simple as her grabbing a gun and capping the thing. It's that easy. So that was the obvious choice. But no, Carly fumbles a damn gun and she dies. Huh? And considering what happens to the one you saved, it makes doing all of that pointless. So, why the fuck help either of them? It doesn't matter in the end. They were never supposed to make it out to begin with. Once you get that through your head, now you're thinking like a telltale game. So, that was one more thing I didn't like. Which brings me back to the subject of everyone questioning Lee and about Clint. <laughs> there were at least three people that knew about Lee, right? Lee, I would assume, is a convicted m murderer. And the only people that knew about it was Carly, Larry, and potentially Lily. Maybe Clint if you told her. She was gonna find out anyway. So that's what, four people? Outside of that, everyone who's questioned Lee about raising Clem or keeping Clem safe has been non-existent on anything. Like, Vernon, that piece of shit talking about some I'm a dangerous person to work with when I got his weak ass. I, In the school, I got his weak ass away from them zombies. Vernon pisses me off, so he can fuck off. Krista doesn't even know me, doesn't know the whole cannibal thing we went through to get to these fools over here, just hiding up on a fucking highway. Krista can get the fuck off. And then I think it was Herschel. Herschel couldn't keep his own damn kids safe. How the fuck? Get off me, Herschel. Everybody that's been questioning Lee didn't even know he was a convicted m murderer. They just assumed, hey, well, you're not her parent, or what, what? You're not her dad. So obviously you don't know what you're doing. I'm just saying like, if her dad was alive, they'd be here. But seeing as that they're not anymore, I was obliged to take up the role. And if we're being honest, Lee did a damn good job raising that kid better than any other parent we've come across in the entire fucking series. I'm just saying, all right? If you saw Carlos and his shit for brain daughter, get him off me. Herschel's kid, gone, in the body bag. Kenny lost his whole damn family, in a body bag. Larry and Lily? Don't get me started. For someone who wasn't biologically the father of Clem, we did a better job with Clem. Get off me. And David, what a case that guy is. When I get to season three, oh, oh man, I got a lot to say about that. But I did not like how everybody came at my boy Lee like, like he was ass. Like, come on now. Come on now, I do this. Well, I, I, me personally don't do this, but Lee, I do this. 
as Lee. I do this. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of father figures, I mentioned him a lot, but I never really fully addressed him. Larry. I hate this fat nose, pop belly, big ass cretin known as Larry, who I think is potentially racist. I think he's kind of racist. I don't know for sure. Hasn't quite been confirmed. But I suspect he's racist. If I were to list a shitstorm of things that make me mad about Larry, this video would be even longer than it already is, so we're not gonna do that. But the few things to touch up on is, aside from him being a belligerent piece of shit who accuses everybody of being bitten and not having his way and throwing bitch fits, this dude punched me in a fucking gas station and left me for dead. If not for Kenny, who I gotta give him credit for, saving me, if not for Kenny, I probably would've got bit a lot sooner. And Larry Big Ass was to blame for that. So you know, when we were trapped in that freezer, like I said, Kenny will make the decision for you if you decide to opt out, but you best believe I didn't opt out. When I got the opportunity, I crushed that Nugget Dome ass with the quickness. I didn't care if Lily was mad at me. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> like, look, I feel for Lily. You know, that's her dad, that's her pops. But he had it coming. Like, get him up out of here. Like, the, like if the, them cannibals wanted something to eat, boy, that was a big fat dead guy up in here they could have totally chewed on. Like, I don't care. Like, what goes around comes around. And boy, I gave him the biggest haymaker, boy. <laughs> I, I, I spared Kenny none of that shit, boy. I got them out of there myself, personally. But then, he... I guess the apple don't fall too far from the tree because Lily would then take up on the habits of him and just advance it to a whole new level of douchebaggery. Who's next on my list, by the way? Lily, I didn't hate Lily when we first met. Lily was normal, a bit standoffish, but she wasn't like Krista standoffish or Rebecca standoff, you know, annoying standoffish. She was kind of like, you know, cautious standoffish. The later, well, later and later we go into the series, she's just the boss of everyone. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, she's out here rationing the food, making sure everybody gets what they need, that they need and all that. She's just running things, apparently. Cool. But when her dad dies, my bad, she loses it. Remember Doug and Carly? Regardless of who you save, Lily, out of sheer rage, pops them in the fucking face. Like, dog. Is it that serious? Depending on who it is, she suspects somebody of giving away our supplies. It was Ben. We've already established that, but Lily didn't know it was Ben, and we're not gonna sit here and pretend she cared about who was giving away supplies at that time. No. If it was Carly, Carly got on her ass. <laughs> and I think Doug does the same thing too. They get on her ass about being a bitch and Lily don't like that. So she <laughs> but she just brains them and then we can't have that. Oh no. Oh no. We down here at Lee Incorporated will not be taking Lily. We will not be accepting of her applications at this time. We wish her the best of luck on her future endeavors. And boy, does she go on to have some endeavors. But, besides the point, you have two options. You can leave her for dead, you know, let her figure shit out on her own, or you could bring her along. Now, I had to go and confirm this myself the second time I played. The first time I left her ass there, like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> you just shot one of us because you didn't have a temper tantrum like your daddy. Hell no. Get the hell out there. You can join and fall out fucking care. The second time, I brought her along. And do you know what this... 
Do you know what this chikorita had the audacity to do? She stole our only means of transportation. The reason we were on a train leading up to Krista and Omid is because Lily, dumbass, took her RV and left us stranded. We gave her a second chance. We gave her a new lease on life. And how does she repay us? She stole our RV, dog. Fuck her. That's some Bonnie shit if I ain't ever seen. Boy, that's grimy. <laughs> that is excruciatingly grimy, dog. With all that. I don't know, I forget, was that even 10 things? <laughs> I don't know, this video almost 40 fucking minutes. Let me, <laughs> I'm done. But yeah, that is 10 things I hate about you. What game should I do next? I'm gonna continue the Walking Dead series, but. Should I just review all the Telltale games? I'm, dude, I would definitely get on Danganronpa. I'm about to beat the third installment of their games, and when I make one about them, that list might be long as hell. I don't know. <laughs> I'm out, though. Ha.